Hello guys, this is the part 6 of the tutorials for SOAP, the scriptable object architecture. In this video we will create more advanced content. We will make one ability that can add an additional weapon and one ability that can spawn a shield. We will also implement new pickups, one that attracts all the experience orbs in a certain radius and one chest that when picked up will open the ability selector. We will also create a new enemy type and I will show how to create a simple debug menu with SOAP. Finally, we will put all the pieces together to have something fun. We are going to start by creating the Add Weapon ability. Let's select our scripts folder and create a new class and call it Weapon Ability Data. Then, let's open it in our code editor. First, let's inherit from our Ability Data class and implement the getDescription method. For this ability, we can simply return the description without formatting. Then, let's add the Create Asset Menu attribute so that we can create it from the project window. Let's write ability data slash weapon ability. Let's delete start and update and create a reference to a game object for the prefab of the weapon we want to spawn. We will spawn the weapon as a child of the player. Therefore, we need a reference to the player transform. With SOAP, we can do this by referencing a transform variable. Let's call it player transform. This variable type does not exist yet, but we can create it very easily. Let's go back to the editor. Let's open the SOAP wizard, and then let's click on Create Type. Let's define Transform as the type we want. Let's deselect the scriptable event as we want to create a scriptable variable and also a scriptable list. Then click on Create. Once it's generated, we can go back to the code. By default, all new variable types created with SOAP will be in the obvious SOAP namespace. Therefore, Let's add this namespace so that this class can know about our new transform variable type. Each time we will add a new weapon, we will add it at a certain offset. This way, we can make sure that weapons will be placed around the player and protect it from all directions. Let's create an array of vector3 and call it offsets. We will spawn each new weapon in the four directions first. Then, we will spawn additional weapons in the four corners. Feel free to implement your own way to place additional weapons. Alright, now we can override the apply method. First, let's instantiate a new weapon as a child of the player transform. Then, we can set its local position according to our offsets. We will use the apply count as the index and use a modulo operator to loop through the array for safety. Finally, we can call the base apply method. Ok, now let's go back to the editor. Let's go to our ability data folder, then right click. Go to Create, Ability Data and Weapon Ability. Let's name it Ability Underscore Weapon and open it as a property. For the description, let's write Weapon Plus One. For the prefab, let's drag our Weapon Prefab. Then for the Transform variable, let's select first our SOAP Variables folder and then click on the Create button. Alright, we are done. We must not forget to select the Ability Selector and add this Ability Data in our array of available abilities. We should move this array in its own scriptable object, so that we don't need to modify the scene whenever we add new abilities. Finally, we need to set the player transform variable value. Let's open the player movement script and create a reference to a transform variable. We can call it player transform. Now, in awake, we set the value of this variable to this transform. Finally, let's not forget to reference it in the editor. Alright, now let's make my favorite pickup from Vampire Survivor, the Attractor Orb. This pickup will attract all experience pickups in a certain radius to the player. Let's start by creating the prefab. Let's use our health pickup prefab as a base and break the prefab connection. Let's change the name to Prefab Attractor Pickup. Then, let's remove the script and change the material to the experience pickup material. Now let's create a new class and call it Attractor Pickup. Then let's open it in the code editor. First, let's remove start and update and inherit from the pickup class. Then let's expose a reference to a float for the attraction radius and set it to 20. Let's also expose another float for the attraction speed. Let's also expose a reference to a transform variable for the player transform. Finally, let's expose a reference to a scriptable list of transform. This list will contain all the experience pickups that are in the level, very similar to the enemy list. 
To write the logic of the attractor, let's create a coroutine and call it CR underscore attract. First, we want to get all experience pickups in range. Then, we want to move them all to the player. Finally, once they are all absorbed, we will destroy this object. Let's get a new list of all the pickups in range by filtering the list of all the pickups in the level that are below the radius. We can use a link query to filter items that have a distance smaller than the radius. Then, we need a way to be notified when a pickup has been collected. Let's go to the pickup class and add a new event action on picked up. We will invoke this event in the base on trigger enter of the pickup class. Nice. Now if we go back to our attractor pickup, we can create a variable to hold the count of all the pickups to attract. First, we set it to the pickups in range count. Then we iterate over all our pickups in range and get the pickup component to be able to subscribe to our picked up event. Finally, when this event is invoked, we want to decrement our count variable. Note that we could have made a scriptable list of pickups instead of transform to avoid doing a get component operation. Now, while the count is bigger than zero, we will loop through all the pickups in range in reverse order. We have to iterate in reverse because elements in this list get destroyed while we are iterating. Let's create a temporary pickup variable to hold the i element of the list and do a null check in case that element was destroyed. Now let's compute the direction to the player and normalize it. We can then move this pickup in this direction at the attraction speed we defined previously. Let's also wait for a frame in between each loop to prevent our game to get stuck. Finally, let's destroy this object. Now we can override on trigger enter and start the coroutine we just created. In this case, we don't want to destroy the object directly, so we are not going to call the base class method. Instead, we are going to disable the collider and disable the view, which is the first child. Like that we can give the illusion to the player that the attractor is destroyed, but actually it is still running its coroutine in the background. Alright, now let's attach this attractor pickup script to the prefab and set the reference to the player transform. Let's create a new scriptable list of transform by selecting our soap list folder and then clicking on the create button. We can rename it to scriptable list exp pickups. Now we can make this attractor a prefab by dragging it in our prefab folder. Awesome. Now we need to add a new component to our experience pickup prefab that will add and remove itself from the scriptable list. Let's create a new script and call it transform list handler. In this script, we only need a reference to the scriptable list. In start, we can add the transform and on destroy, remove it. Now, let's open our experience pickup prefab, add this component, and reference our scriptable list. Nice, we are all set up. Let's test this quickly. Let's move the attractor a bit further and press play. Let's kill a few enemies. Now, let's trigger our attractor, and yes, we can see that it works. Pretty cool. Now let's create a new enemy type. Let's make a prefab variant of our enemy prefab and call it prefab enemy fast. Let's open it in prefab mode, change the material to another one, and set the rotation speed to 700. Then, let's select the root and set the actual speed to 5. We could improve our enemy by adding a field for the damage amount. We could also pool them instead of instantiating and destroying them. Anyways, currently, we only have one enemy spawner. In your game, you can decide how you want to handle the difficulty pacing. Here, I'm simply going to duplicate the enemy spawner a bunch of times, increase initial delays, and change a few other settings. But first, let's make an empty object to hold all the enemy spawners. Let's adjust the value of the first spawner. Let's set the spawn range to 10 and 15, and set the spawn interval to 2. Then, we can duplicate it and increase the spawn range a bit. Let's also set the initial delay to 10. For the next one, let's spawn two enemies each time, and set the initial delay to 15. To save some time, I have already set up 10 enemy spawners. Feel free to pause the video if you want to apply the same settings. Note that I added a reference to the fast enemy prefab to a few spawners. Let's not forget to add a spawner for our attractor pickup. Let's delete the prefab in the scene and duplicate the health pickup spawner and rename it to attractor pickup spawner. Let's change the prefab to the attractor pickup and as this is a powerful pickup, 
let's increase the spawn range to be between 20 and 25, the spawn interval to 20 and the initial delay to 20 also. Alright, now I am going to show you how SOAP can be helpful for debugging your game. First, let's see how we can easily apply abilities. Let's open the float ability data script. Abilities are scriptable objects, meaning that we can add a context menu attribute to the apply method. Now we can call this method from the inspector whenever we want. Let's try it. Let's go back to the editor and play the game. Let's select the fire rate ability for example and go to its menu, then select apply. It worked. This is useful, but it is still a bit annoying to select the asset and to go into this menu. We could make a custom editor button, but what if we are testing the game on a build and not in editor? Therefore I will show you yet another way to apply an ability. Let's go to our UI canvas and create a new panel and call it Debug Panel. Let's move it above the Ability Selector. Let's anchor it to the bottom left and set its size to something like 400 by 400. Then, let's add a vertical layout group and set the child alignment to middle center and control the children width and height size. Now let's create a new button text mesh pro and call it Debug Button. Then let's set the text to Move Speed and also set the auto size property to true. Now on the on click unity event of the button, we can add an action and reference our ability move speed. We can then call our apply method directly from here. That's it. To save some time, I have added two more ability buttons. One to apply the fire rate ability and one to apply the add more weapon ability. But we can do more. Let's duplicate the last button and change the text to level up. Now, instead of referencing an ability, we will reference the experience float variable. Then I can select the add method and add a big number, like 10,000s for example. A last one that might be useful is a healing button. Let's duplicate the last button, change the text to heal, and reference the player health. Our health is clamped to the max health so we can leave 10,000. It will simply fully heal our player. By using UGUI and scriptable objects, we are able to create very useful and quick interactions for our game. Some developers do not like this direct access. However, I suggest you to try it for yourself and see if you like it or not. At this point of the tutorial, we have a great base project to build upon. To show you how easy it is to add features, I will show you how I implemented a new pickup and a new ability. For the pickup, I decided to make a chest. Let's open the prefab. I used AI tools to create the 3D model and the texture. If you want to know more about how I did it, feel free to check out my video about it. The game object is on the pickup layer and it has an event pickup component attached. This script is very simple. It inherits from our base pickup class and simply raises an scriptable event with no parameter when triggered. I called the scriptable event on chest picked up. Then in our ability selector, I added an event listener no param to listen to this event. When triggered, it will enable the ability selector panel. Basically, collecting a chest enables the player to select between three abilities, which is similar to leveling up. To make this work, you just need to add one line in the ability selector that will disable the panel when an ability is selected. This way, it does not matter if our ability selector was open through leveling up or from the chest. For the ability, I decided to create a shield ability. This ability works a bit differently than the others in a sense that the first time it is applied, it will spawn a shield, but then it will increase the speed of the shield. Therefore, we can see that we use a float variable for the shield speed multiplier and also a reference to the shield prefab we want to spawn. If we take a look at the code, we can see that we inherited from the float ability data class. In our apply method, we check two different cases. First, if the apply count is zero, meaning that it is the first time that the ability is applied, we instantiate the shield and increase the count. Otherwise, we simply call the base method that will add an increment to the float variable. The description also returns a different string if it is the first time the ability is applied. If we take a look at the shield prefab, we can see that it is on the projectile layer. Its local position is offset by 1 on the y-axis and by 2 on the z-axis, and it has a shield script. Let's take a look at it in the code editor. We have two float references, one for the speed and one for the speed multiplier. For the logic, we kill the enemy on trigger enter. 
and in update, we just rotate around the parent transform position at a certain speed. I hope you can understand from the various examples how easy it is to add modular features to this game. I tried to show a lot of tools and structure so that you can create new abilities, weapons, enemy types or pickups. The only limit is your own imagination. Of course, to make it truly your game, you will also want to do an art pass, define a custom difficulty curve, and player progression system. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and found it useful. Leave a comment below if you have suggestions for new features or tutorials, and join our Discord channel. All the useful links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.